Ma Deer's Aprons by Patricia C. McKissick, illustrations by Floyd Cooper. David Earl always knows what day of the week it is. He can tell by the clean, snappy, fresh apron Ma Deer is wearing. A different one for every day. Monday. David Earl knows it's Monday because Ma Deer puts on her blue apron, the one with the long pocket across the front. It's wash day, and that's where she keeps the clothespins. First, Ma Deer heats water in the big kettle and pours it into several tubs. Then she rolls up her sleeves and scrubs each piece on her rub board. David Earl would rather blow bubbles, but instead he gathers peach tree leaves for Ma Deer to use in the last rinse. That's the secret to my bright wash, Ma Deer explains as they hang out sheets. At day's end, when the last sweet-smelling piece has been taken off the line and folded, Ma Deer rests in her rocking chair. Her hands are red and chafed. She's so tired, yet she holds out her arms. Come, she says. David Earl crawls into his mother's lap. She reaches inside her blue apron pocket and takes out a wooden clothespin. Once there was a brave soldier, she begins. The clothespin becomes that soldier standing at attention who died fighting out west. David Earl looks at the flag and sword hanging over the mantle. His name was Sergeant David Earl Bramlett Sr., the same as mine, except I'm a junior, he adds, finishing the story he's heard many times before. Too soon it's time for bed. Ma Deer kisses her son goodnight, and he drifts off to sleep wrapped in a wind-dried sheet that smells of peach blossoms. Tuesday. Why do you always wear your yellow apron on ironing day? David Earl wants to know. Yellow is the color of the sun, Ma Deer answers, and sunshine makes me feel good, even when I have to iron all day. It's Tuesday, and six baskets of clothes sit by the fireplace. Several sizes of irons are being heated over hot coals. David Earl gets to press a few practice pieces. No cat faces now, his mother reminds him. He knows she'll check for any little wrinkles that look like whiskers on the pieces that have been ironed. Remembering how she's taught him, David Earl scoops a handful of water from his bowl and sprinkles it over the fabric. Then he irons and irons and irons. See, no cat faces, he says, holding up his handiwork. Oh my goodness, Ma Deer replies, laughing at the scorched rag. The day is long and hot. Ma Deer dips the corner of her apron in cold water and wipes David Earl's face. With the other corner, she wipes her own. At last, ironing day is over. All the baskets are filled and ready for delivery. David Earl lies fast asleep on a pallet near the door. A night breeze cools the room. Ma Deer covers the boy with her apron and blows out the candle. Wednesday. After breakfast on Wednesday, Ma Deer ties on her green apron with the hidden pocket. The treasure pocket, David Earl calls it. The boy helps his mother hitch their wagon to Gracious. They load the baskets, then set off across the railroad tracks to the other side of Avery, where all the rich people live. Ma Deer lets David Earl hold the reins, but Gracious knows the way. His mother rides looking straight ahead, and has told David Earl to do the same. But as they pass, he can't help sneaking a peek at the big chandelier inside the Grand View Opera House. The mayor stops in front of a large mansion on the corner of Main and Tucker Streets. David Earl stands quietly beside Ma Deer at the basement door while Mrs. Hillenbach carefully checks the laundry. Your work is good, the woman says flatly placing a quarter in Ma Deer's hand. Then, casting her eyes down to David Earl, the woman adds, You may have a peach off my tree if you want one. The boy stands erect and lifts his head proudly the way Ma Deer says his daddy did. No, thank you, he answers. On the way home, Ma Deer makes her usual stop at Hanson's General Store, where she buys a few staples and one treat. That evening, after David Earl has finished helping with the dinner dishes, she reaches inside her apron. Look what I found, 
she says, pulling a penny peppermint stick from the treasure pocket. Thursday. When the southbound passenger train rumbles through Avery on its way to Huntsville, David Earl knows it's Thursday. And when the sun tops the big spruce like a silver ball, he knows it's noon. Come noon Thursday, Ma Deer puts on a cheerful pink apron and they go to visit the sick and shut in. But first, Ma Deer and David Earl feed the hens and chicks and gather eggs. Then they pick a dozen ripe red tomatoes, some okra, and a couple of cucumbers from their garden. We're going to take these to Madame Pearlie, Ma Deer says. David Earl is happy because Madame Pearlie is so interesting. She was once a famous singer who performed concerts on three continents. All she has left now are her piano, her photo albums, and lots of memories. Madame Pearlie, did you really sing for the Queen of England? The boy asks when they get there. The proud and dignified woman slides to the piano stool. Her fingers know how to find the right keys. The queen herself requested that I sing a spiritual, she remembers. They tell me she had tears in her eyes when I finished Deep River. David Earl imagines he is in a huge concert hall filled with three chandeliers as big as, no, bigger than the one in the Grand View Opera House. Queen Victoria seated in her box. Madame Pearlie bows gracefully and begins in a high, clear voice. Deep river, river Lord, my home is over Jordan. Oh, deep river Lord, I want to cross over into campground. The music stays in David Earl's head the rest of the day. And that night, just before he falls asleep, he hears Ma Deer humming the same melody as she sews by candlelight. Friday. Oh no, it's Friday again, says David Earl when he sees Ma Deer tie on her brown apron. Brown so it won't show dirt, she explains. On Fridays, Ma Deer cleans house for the Alexander family over in Mission, about five miles from Avery. David Earl has to go along. You're too young to stay home by yourself, she says, so don't even ask. Alton Montgomery gets to stay home alone. Alton Montgomery is not my son. But finish your breakfast so we can go. But no more buts, Ma Deer says in her no-nonsense voice. And stop whining. David Earl eats his oatmeal in silence. Once they get to the Alexanders, Ma Deer is not so angry anymore. The house is big, but not nearly as grand as the Hillenbach mansion. Ma Deer says the Alexanders are expecting to be rich people but they're not rich yet. Mrs. Alexander leaves a long list of things for Ma Deer to do. While she works, Ma Deer teaches David Earl a new song. Inch along, inch along like a poor inch worm. She covers her face with a handkerchief and she covers her own face with her apron. They beat the rugs, shovel ashes out of the fireplace and scrub floors. When they stop for lunch, Ma Deer takes a piece of string from her apron pocket. She makes a Jacob's Ladder, a crow's foot, and a cup and saucer. David Earl tries to make the string designs, but they don't come out right. Back at work, Ma Deer goes upstairs. She changes the beds, dusts, and sweeps every room. Meanwhile, David Earl pretends he's an inchworm as he pulls weeds from Mrs. Alexander's flower garden slowly moving down each row of blooms. At sunset on the way home, David Earl keeps trying to make the string designs. With a little help, he makes Jacob's ladder. I did it, he says, and does it again and again. Saturday. On Saturday, Ma Deer bakes pies. Wearing her flowered apron, she and David Earl gather apples out back. Ma Deer can peel a whole apple without breaking the skin. Throw it over your shoulder, she says, and it will form the first letter of the name of someone who loves you. David Earl does, and like magic, the peeling forms the letter J. Ma Deer winks her eye. See, I told you. Ma Deer's name is Janelle. When the pies are all baked and cooled, Gracious pulls Ma Deer and David Earl to the train station, where passengers buy every last one. 
At home, Ma Deer puts a coin in a small container on the top shelf of the cabinet. For your schooling, come next year, she says. Then it's bath time. Ma Deer puts on an over-the-head gray apron. She pours hot water into the round tin tub. David Earl flaps his arms, splashing water everywhere. Look, I'm a big fish. You're a big mess, Ma Deer says. Just look at my floor. She pours in more hot water and gives him a good scrubbing from head to toe. Are you going to hang me out to dry like a sheet? I should, Ma Deer answers with a gleam in her eye. But instead, she adds, I'm going to tickle your toes until you can say, Jack, wick, whack, stick, ball, a smack, tick, tack, mick, mack, skip, scat, jack. Between giggles, David Earl tries to repeat the tongue twister, but he can't say it fast enough. I give up, I give up, he cries, gasping with laughter. Ma Deer dries him and herself with her big gray apron. Come now, have a slice of apple pie. Sunday, a church bell rings in the distance. That's how David Earl knows it's Sunday. Ma Deer has a week of workday aprons, one for every chore, but she never wears an apron on Sunday. This is your no work day, says David Earl, pulling on the pants Ma Deer has made. Soon as he's put on his one pair of shoes, Ma Deer brushes his hair. After service, why don't we take our supper down to Sutter's Mill Creek, she says. Can I fish? If you fish on Sunday, you'll catch the devil, Ma Deer says, adjusting her hat. David Earl glances up at the flag and sword over the mantle and smiles. Did Pa fish on Sunday? He asks as they hurry out the door.